All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome. Amen. We'd like to welcome you this evening to Friday Night Bible Studies. Amen. I'm glad you guys were able to join us and tune in this night. Uh, I have a great pleasure and an honor, amen, to uh, continue tonight in our open lessons, amen. And this night uh, we're going to have uh, Brother Andrew who's going to come and minister. He's one of the brothers that's been up and coming, amen. You guys have heard him, amen. He's been... Uh, He's been doing good on Facebook, amen. We see a lot of views on his messages, amen. So he's going to come up, he's going to bring the word, amen. Come on, yeah. 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 Hey, Good evening, uh, everybody. Facebook, welcome. It's good to be with you guys again. So I'm just going to share a little of what, uh, what I feel the Lord gave me and... and uh, Hopefully it's encouraging or challenging or a blessing, whatever it is that you need. Um, but before anything, let's just open in prayer. Amen. Father God, just come before you, Lord. Just thank you, Father God, for this day, for salvation, Lord. Father, I just right now, just surrender to you, Lord, everything, Father God. And I thank you, God, for this privilege to just be able to share your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just have your way. And just take control and speak whatever you want to speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. Um, Amen. So uh, tonight we're just going to be, t I have a, mess a lesson or a message. It's entitled, But You Follow Me. But You Follow Me. Um, so how many know that we as Christians or followers of Christ have all been called to follow the Lord Jesus and glorify God with our lives. As we follow the Lord, we will each be given different callings in, in whether it's in, in ministry, and we will be called to glorify God throughout our lives. These callings are individual for each of us, and only we, through faith and the power of the Holy Spirit, can accomplish them. You know, and so this perspective tonight is just as, a, as individuals, you know, we, we, have, we have to, you know, the church has its purpose as for fellowship and stuff, but I want to speak this evening about as individuals, you know, um, and I believe that God hasn't called us to church to just sit in church and just be a part of the church and a part of the furniture, you know, God has called us to do something, he's called us to glorify him, you know, our lives should glorify God, you know, the, the, and and with and, and it and with that having the knowledge and knowing that you know we're promised eternal eternal life you know we're promised in eternity a life of peace and a life of joy and a life of no more pain no more suffering but that's that's going to come in the future you know here and here and now in the present our job is to glorify God you know as and I'm speaking to believers this evening specifically in this you know because. We know that with unbelievers, you know they're, that they're not seeking to glorify God. That's not their that's not their thought. So this evening, I want to look at um, I want us to look at at Jesus uh, at Jesus as such his challenge to Peter, to the disciple Peter. Um, so we're going to be in the book of John, chapter twenty one, verses fifteen to twenty four. We're gonna we're gonna kind of touch that. It's a familiar story if you've ever read the Bible. Um, Jesus, Jesus has already risen from the dead. He's already, he's already resurrected, and he's beginning to show himself. Uh, John 21, 15 to 24. Um, so he's already appearing to his disciples. He's appearing to different believers and different witnesses, and showing himself that he is, he is like he, like he prophesied. He is risen. You know. So we, we see here that that um, the disciples were out fishing. And the Lord appeared to them, um, and he told them, you know, to, to cast out, you know, hey, do, have you guys caught any fish? And they say no. And he tells them to, to cast out, you know, to the right side, and, and they they um, they caught a bunch of fish. You know, it says that the nets were, the net was so heavy that they couldn't even bring it in. And um, the disciples, you know, they see that it's the Lord, and they, they get excited, and they, they, they row to shore. It says that Peter even, he threw on his, his tunic and he jumped in the water. He dove in and he couldn't wait. You know, he just wanted to go. And, and it says when they got there that, that Jesus already had breakfast for them. He already had some, some fish on the grill and, you know, 
He was he was ready to you know take care of his, his people. You know how many you know and so um, that's an awesome thing because that's that's just the kind of the kind of Lord that we have that he's he always takes care of us. You know he's always looking out for us. You know so. I'm going to read, I'm going to kind of open it up here in verse 15. Um, my, Bible, my Bible says, Jesus challenges Peter. So after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. The Lord seeks a wholehearted, unconditional surrender from us. He wants our very best, a 100% commitment to serving him no matter what that looks like. It may be in a ministry with no recognition. You know, it may be the dirty work no one else wants to do, such as cleaning the bathrooms, you know, cleaning the church, ushering in the parking lot, right? <laughs> you know, maybe being in the background somewhere that where, you know, there's no recognition, there's no, uh, you know, no, no screen time, you know, no YouTube time. You know, back in the day, you didn't have to worry about that because they didn't really start recording too much stuff, you know, but now we're live and you see, you see a glimpse of services and stuff. And, um, you know, the Lord, the Lord would challenge our commitment as we see he did here with Peter. Our relationship and service to the Lord is individual. So we know a little background that we know that, you know, Peter denied the Lord. We know that he denied the Lord three times. The Lord prophesied it. You know, we know that Peter was a disciple that, he was, you know, he was always looking to kind of show that he was, that he was, you know, he was down for the cause. You know, he was, he was like, he was always that guy that was like, no matter what, you know, and, and he even said that no matter what, even if all these guys flake out, I'm, I'm with you till the end. I'll die with you, you know, but we know that ultimately, ultimately he, um, he denied the Lord, you know, it was, he denied God three times, you know, and we see here that Jesus came and he asked him this question three times. He challenged him, you know. Uh, I know that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all of our sins. So I know that in, in Peter denying Jesus, I know as soon as as the Lord died on the cross and the veil was split, Peter was Peter was forgiven of that. He was forgiven of falling short. He was forgiven of saying, I don't know the Lord, you know, immediately. Like, how could he not be? If Jesus died, if we believe that Jesus died for all of our sins once and for all, you know, but Jesus came to Peter because he wanted to see, you know, where's this guy at? We know that Peter was the front runner, you know, uh, as far as the disciples. You know, we, we know that Peter was kind of, uh, you know, he was viewed as the leader. He was viewed as, you know, he was the rock. You know, he was the rock, you know, and, and he was the, the chosen guy to kind of be that, that front runner. And... So Jesus is, is comes back to challenge Peter because we know that you know the Lord is getting ready to he's getting ready to ascend into heaven yeah. once and for all. So he comes to Peter and 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 uh, I want to read just this little commentary here in the Bible. Um, just this little commentary. I, I like the way that they that, that they put it here. It says um, in this beach scene, Jesus led Peter through an experience that would remove the cloud of his denial. Peter had denied Jesus three times. Three times Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. When Peter answered yes, Jesus told him to feed his sheep. It is one thing to say you love Jesus, but the real test is your willingness to serve him. Mm. Peter had repented, and here Jesus was asking him to commit his life to him. Peter's life changed when he finally realized who Jesus was. His occupation changed from fisherman to evangelist. His identity changed from impetuous to rock, and his relationship to Jesus changed. He was forgiven, and he finally understood the significance of Jesus' words about his death and resurrection. Um, so Jesus asked Peter three times. I like the way that they put this because it kind of brings a little perspective into the conversation and, and, and what Jesus was getting at. 
And, I, and it's important for us to look at this right now because I feel like this is a challenge for us. You know, we're talking about uh, prayer, how, how we feel like God is calling us to prayer and calling us to go deeper and to, to commit harder, you know, and uh, to him our lives. It says, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. The first time Jesus said, do you love the Greek word agape? So uh, self-sacrificial love, me more than these. The second time Jesus focused on Peter alone um, and still used the word translated into agape, a Greek agape. The third time Jesus used the word translated into Greek as phileo. I think that's how you say it, phileo. Mm -hmm. Signifying affection, affinity, or brotherly love, and asked in effect, "Are you even my friend?" You know. So he, the first two times, he's like, "You know, are you really committed to me?" You know, even more than all of these guys, because we gotta understand that that position that Peter was being given was as as a leader. You know, because Peter even told him when he was gonna deny him, you know, strengthen, you know, strengthen your brethren. Mm -hmm. So why would he tell him that if he if if Peter wasn't going to be in place in the position to be a front runner, you know. Um, but I like this because Jesus, Jesus, it, it's like a challenge to us, you know. Do you love me? Do you love me enough to, to fulfill the ministry that I called you to do? Do you love me enough to, if you were asked to do it, to usher in the parking lot for a month straight or to clean the bathrooms for, for, for the next year? You know, do you love me more than all these other these other people in the church to continue to follow me? And then he asked him like that 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 third time where it was like, Are you even my friend? You know? Is is Jesus even our friend? Or is he just do we just continue to view him as our meal ticket into heaven? You know, ah, you know, he's a good Lord, you know, and I and I love what he can do for me. But other than that I don't really care. You know, we kinda talked about prayer earlier, how you know what does our prayer life look like? You know, are we just asking for gimme, gimme, gimme's, or are we really seeking to conversate with the Lord? So again, the Lord will challenge our commitment as we see He did here with Peter. Our relationship and service to the Lord is individual, and these are individual questions that we have to ask ourselves. We have to view our commitment and, and what where we're at with the Lord in our lives, and what the Lord is preparing for us. Um, uh, let me see. Okay, so then we're going to continue to read here. So he challenges Peter and he asks him, you know, um, so we, we see that. Uh, okay, so then he says, you know, Jesus tells him the third time, then feed my sheep. And then he tells him in verse 18, he tells him, I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and you went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old... You will stretch out your hands, and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. That's pretty, that's pretty radical, you know, the fact that Jesus was like, hey man, just letting you know, this is, this is how you're going out. Imagine if Jesus told us that, you know, like, follow me, but, you know, I'm going to tell you right now that, you know, uh, Somebody's going to kill you in, a, in an outreach. Somebody's going to come up to you with a gun and they're going to shoot you. I know it's kind of crazy to think about it, but Jesus is telling Peter right now, you're about to be crucified for, to glorify God. You know, but what if, what, if, what if the Lord spoke to us and said that? Man, you, you know, one day, one day you're going you're gonna, to you're, you're gonna get really sick in serving me, 10 years into ser your service to me, and, and you're going to die from it. You're not going to recover from it. You know, but follow me. You know, what our, uh, that's what Jesus was, was, he was, that's what he was testing Peter in. He's saying, man, dude, you're about to, because if you go in, the, ne the very next book is what? The book of Acts. They, the, the disciples start putting it down. You know, the Holy Spirit comes in and we yeah. know Peter, Come on. Peter goes up there and he starts just laying into, into the, to the, uh, to the people, you know. And this is where we have to understand at some point we got to, you know, we can't just continue to be a part of the, the furniture. God didn't call us to be a part of the furniture. He tells them, you're going to be crucified, and you're going to be crucified for, unto the glory of God. Our life here on earth is supposed to glorify God. Once we get to heaven, once we get to eternity, that's where the, that's where the party starts. That's where we're going to be, you know, you know that's where, where we're going to be, you know, in, in paradise, in our mansion. You know, 
George is, George is going to be selling. His house is going to get sold pretty soon, and, and the Lord's going to bless him. But, man, George's got a, he's got a mansion with a, I, 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 I probably got a, you know, a, a slide with a pool with a slide in it. And I'm going to be at George's pad all the time, you know. We'll be right there. I don't know what we're going to be eating or what, you know. But, you know, we have to understand, like, Jesus is telling Peter, like, I need you to really get this. Really, I need, really need you to really get this. My next point is this. Um, oh, so you know, he's just he he's he's telling them that you know. So then we're gonna continue to read there. Um, just good old Peter. I love Peter because he just I don't know. He, he reminds me of me, man. I, I I like to say these stupid things sometime, or or I just put my foot in my mouth and I'm like, hey, man, you know. Go, Pete. Well, that was Peter. Peter was you know Jesus had to rebuke Peter because. He was trying to, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to rebuke Jesus. Like, G Peter was crazy, man. Like, but um, so then, and he says, uh, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna. This is by what kind of death you're gonna glorify me? Then Jesus told him, follow me, right? He's saying, follow me. So in verse in verse twenty, Peter turned around and saw behind them the disciple Jesus loved, the one who leaned over to Jesus during supper and asked. Lord, who will betray you? We know that we know uh, uh, John, the disciple John, was was known as as the disciple that Jesus loved. Um, but Peter, look at Peter, man. Peter's like, yeah, I'm about to. I think you know, we, knowing Peter, his character, he was a little. I think he was a little prideful in that, where he was like, yeah, I'm about to die the same way Jesus died. You know, like, yeah. you know, and 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 um, he turns around and he sees John and he's like, well, what about this guy? How is he gonna die? You know. He's 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 saying it like, you know, is he, who who's gonna go out in a, in a bigger blaze of glory? I guess you could say, you know. And um, Jesus, Jesus, I like how Jesus, you know, I like how Jesus responds to him because we like to put Jesus in this little box where he's just like this, oh, you know, my child. And Jesus, is like, dude, he, you know, his response was, um, Jesus replied, if I want him to remain alive until I return. What is that to you? He's basically telling him, like, mind your own business, dude. Like, what do you care? You know? Who are you? As for you, follow me. There's that word again. Follow me. And he tells him, as for you, individual, follow me. What is it to you? God's will for each individual Christian is as he wills. As, as God wills it. Our concern should be that which God has ordained for us. Mm -hmm. We have been called to fulfill God's will in our lives so that God is glorified. You know, as we're as we're walking this Christian life, you know, we need to we need to serve God alongside our fellow believers, encouraging them to go forward and run their race with zeal and gladness. We are not in a competition with, with one another to see who is more holy or who is more worthy. You know, that's what Jesus is telling, he was telling Peter here, man. He's like, we're just, you do what I've called you to do. You follow me and what I've called you to follow. And let and don't worry about John. John John has his own will. John has his own, not his own, his own plan. There's a plan for John. There's a, there's a calling for John, you know. And, and we need to, you know, we need to, um, we need to be concerned with our, with our own salvation. We need to be concerned with what we're, there to do. We need to be concerned with our is our life glorifying God. Okay. If we do that, everything else will take care of itself because God is in control. You know, and we, and we need to not worry about well, you know, I'm I, you know I, I'm I'm over here doing this ministry and mm -hmm. I'm over here you know working in in this capacity. But what about this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how much is this guy doing? How much is that sister doing? Mm -hmm. You know. We need to we need to come come alongside our brothers and sisters and encourage them. Mm -hmm. Man, keep going, keep yeah. running the race. Mm -hmm. Great job, brother. You know, like man, keep it up. You know, I'm proud of you. Or, you know, is it and isn't it crazy that that that's that's you don't always hear that in church. You know, that's supposed to be the the people of God, the, the followers of Christ, Christ likeness, and you know, um, so. I feel like this, you know, this evening that that challenge is for for us as individuals to come in, to seek the Lord, and then God in His timing and His will 
will orchestrate everything else mm -hmm. so that as right. a body, you know, the Bible tells us when the Holy Spirit came that the disciples were in the upper room. They were in one mind and one accord. They were unified. You know, they were praying. And that's when the Holy Spirit came in. You know? Imagine if, imagine if, if, if you know, Peter was over here like, oh, hey, man, you know, I'm going to get, <coughs> I'm going to get crucified like Jesus. So come and hang out with me and you guys will probably end up crucified like Jesus. And John, you know, John's over here like, and, and, and the Bible says that, that, um, um, in verse 23, it says that there was a rumor that got spread around. It says, uh, so the rumors, the, so the rumor spread among the community of believers that this disciple wouldn't die. Mm -hmm. But that isn't what Jesus said at all. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Mm -hmm. You know, so isn't that crazy? Like, it started a whole rumor that, hey, John's not going to die. You know, John's invincible. Uh, you know, you probably had people that were trying to, I don't know, maybe they're trying to kill him. Like, hey, I, I took John out. You know, like, he, they said that he was untouchable. You know, I remember there was a movie back in the day called Untouchables. It was an old gangster movie, like, uh, not Cholos, but gangster, like, the suits, you know. Yeah, the mafia, the mafia. I remember it, it was called The Untouchables because these, these guys were known to be, like, yeah. You know, I remember seeing that a long time ago, but, you know, but isn't that crazy that, that, imagine, imagine that, imagine if, if Peter would have gone and done that and separated, separated, I would have wanted to be with John, like, hey, this guy's not going to die, this guy's got favor, let me go over here, maybe I'll get some of that, I won't have to worry about dying, you know, and as opposed to being next to Peter, where Peter's, this guy's going to get crucified, like, get away from him, you know, but, it says that they were in one mind and one accord, you know, they, they, and that's when the Holy Spirit came and just, man, you know, when we hear about the, you know, the day of Pentecost and just the powerful things that these guys did. And, and that's what we need to, we need to see in our church as we focus, what does the Bible tell us, you know, um, was it Matthew 6, what, 33? Seek first the kingdom of God. Matt, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these, you know, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Imagine if we did that. If we purpose in our heart to say, "Man, I, I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to whatever His will is, whatever His call is, I'm going to focus on that. And I'm going to along along with that, I'm going to encourage my brothers and my sisters to just continue to move forward. Imagine the things that we would be seeing. You know, the, the stories that would be we would hear. You know, and <clears throat> you know, but it, it's just something to think about because, as I said, it's an individual call. And you know, as individuals, we're called, you know, to to pursue the Lord. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. I, I, I also think that Jesus worded it that way to kind of make it clear to Peter, like, if I want to, this will happen. I have the power to keep this man alive for as long as I want. Right. So why are you questioning me? So I felt like that, that like stood out to me, that Jesus worded it that way. If I wanted to, this man could live forever. So how about you mind your business and work about yourself? Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. true. I don't, think, I don't think Jesus, Jesus never had any kind of a, a, a question as far as the authority that God gave to him. He knew, mm -hmm. he knew, the Lord has given me this authority. I'll do whatever I want with it, you know. And he did. You know, he raised the dead. He opened the eyes of the blind. He, you know, cast out demons. He, he had no no type of an identity crisis in his life, you know. <laughs> That's right. Um, but you follow me. We need to follow Jesus wholeheartedly with all of our mind, our heart, our soul, and our strength. Um, you know, Jesus is telling Peter, he's like, but you follow me. You're gonna. You're you're about to be crucified, to glorify God. But follow me. You know, imagine like how many times have we seen believers that you know they get a bad report or something just, something just doesn't go right. You know, something that something that's. It could be a small thing. Man. It could be. Oh, you know that 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 brother. He doesn't say hi to me or something. Just to me, I've seen some pretty petty stuff. Happened in the church where you're just like, man, that's so stupid. You know, you're 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 hindering the spirit for something so so childish. You know, that's right. 
You know, and, and but he's he's telling them, but follow me. And that's what Jesus is telling us tonight. You're you're, you're gonna there's gonna be something in your life where you're gonna you're gonna have to face, you're gonna have to endure, you're gonna have to go through, but it's gonna glorify God. It's it, it's for the honor for the for the glory of God, and that's what we've been called to do. You know, glorify God. You know, we see we've heard powerful testimonies of things that people have endured and you know things that that people have have faced. You know, in the service in the service of God, and and, and what happens? You know, they, they 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 bring glory to God. But along with that glory, there's there's salvation, there's deliverance. You know, you see loved ones get saved, you see miracles happen, you see different things. Right, amen. You know, and, and and that's what Jesus is saying. He's like, but well, you follow me, no matter what, you follow me, and that's that's what God is calling us. He's challenging us. It's time to it's time to just keep our eyes on the Lord no matter what no matter what we face and just follow him 100% wholeheartedly you know um um in in 1 Corinthians 10:13 I'm going to read that um just as part of that to kind of to bring that just a little bit of that of encouragement and, and truth to that 1 Corinthians 10:13 says um Where's that? Uh, the temptations in your life are not are no different from what others experience. You know, you could you could that word temptation you could use as the the traumas in your life, the scars in your life, the 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 hurts, the pains, the you know the rejections, the the assaults from the enemy. You know, they're no different from what others experience. You know, we see what, that the disciples experienced some of the same things we're experiencing. Jesus went through right. it. says, and God, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. You know, when you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. So God, you know, God's not going to give us more than what we, you know, what we can't handle. And I think one of the important things is that Jesus wanted to establish... With Peter, that hey man, this is you're not gonna do this on your own strength. You know you couldn't do it on your own strength. That's why you denied me. You know that's why you denied me three times because you were, you, it was your own strength. It was your own zeal. You're gonna you're gonna do these things because I, I'm gonna empower you through the Holy Spirit because I I I, you, I know that you can handle this. And that's one thing I think we need to understand is our, our view. We need to change our view of ourselves. And, and, and start to have the mind of Christ and how, how the Lord views us. I know that for me, that's something that I always, the Lord always brings to my mind that scripture, I'm not sure where it's found, but, you know, when, when, when it talks about, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, old things have passed away and all things become new. And I, I think about that scripture in my life because, man, I'm, I, I think about mistakes I've made or things that I've endured or or the perspective of myself sometimes where I'm just like, man, you know, I'm not, I'm not good enough or I'm not, whatever it may be, the doubts that come in. But I think about that, I'm like, man, Lord, you know, you say I'm a new creation. All that, all that old junk is, is, is done. You know, you took care of that, you know, and, and give me the strength, give me the confidence in you, not in myself, but in you, Lord. You know, because I've always, I've always dealt with that. Where I see, you know, certain things, I see certain pastors or evangelists or, or even just, Men of God, you know, or even women of God that have powerful testimonies. I'm like, man, I would like to be like that someday, you know. But I don't know, man. I don't know if I, I don't know if, if my life will ever, will ever look like that. If, if, if God will ever really be glorified through my life like that, you know. But then I think, I'm like, man, but they're, they're no different than I am. Peter was no different than I am, you know. But yet, he, the, the Lord did it. You know, the Holy Spirit gave him that power. And so... That, that, that's true for all of us. That's true for all of us. You know, God God is able to do anything. But we just have to continue to follow the Lord. You know, a lot of the ladies were referencing that the message of, of your feet. You know, aligning your feet with the Lord and just yes. just walking that path and staying faithful to that path and trusting the Lord in it. And we need to do that. Amen. And uh, um, my last scripture. Um, this is this is not a long one like the last one, but you know. It was kind of short and sweet and to the point, but um, my last scripture that I have is um, in, uh, did I not write it down? I didn't write it down. 
and we're going to uh, God who has God who is who is who has begun a good work in us is faithful to complete it. You know what um you know what what book that's in? Which one? Uh he who has begun a good work um is faithful to complete it. Yeah. I wrote the well I think it's uh ten, second Timothy. Is this is first Timothy or second Timothy? Seven. Yeah. Philippians 1 6? Okay. Philippians 1 6. For some reason, I didn't write down the uh, the book that it was in. All right, Philippians 1 6. I want to read it from the Bible because I kind of paraphrased it in my notes and I want us to get the, the fullness of it. Philippians uh, chapter 1 6 to 7 says. Says, uh, this is uh, the Apostle Paul writing, says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ returns. Amen. So, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, you know, the Bible, what the Bible tells us that God chose us. We didn't choose God. It was the Holy Spirit that drew us to God. It was the Holy Spirit that called us to this life. And, and it's, it's all part of God's plan, you know, and, and his purpose for our life, that he's going to fulfill whatever it is that he desires to fulfill, whatever he has purpose for us in our lives. And we have to hold on to that and continue to follow the Lord, knowing that that's true, knowing that that promise is true. You know, the Bible tells us that God is not a man that he should lie, you know, Amen. he doesn't lie. He, he fulfills his promises and we get impatient at times, you know, waiting, waiting for God to do it, you know. Um, we, we, you know, we think, uh, man, it's time for me to do this, it's time for me to do that, and it's like, no, you gotta wait, you know. Peter had, to, Peter had to go through that. He had to deny Jesus those three times, because now God was bringing it, bringing it, you know, bringing what He promised as far as that faithful faithfulness to 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 complete that work in Peter. Where Peter had to wait, you know, it, it was only, you know, three days when the Lord, you know, resurrected. But, you know, he, he showed himself to, to many disciples. I think, how many days was it that he was? Remember how 40. 40 days? 40. So for 40 days, there was 40 days. This could have been the, this could have been day 40. Jesus is walking around, you know, showing himself to witnesses. And Peter, you know, those 40 days, imagine what... Imagine that time, 40 days. To us, 40 days is like, oh, that's a month, you know, a little a little, a little over a month. But imagine Peter. Peter denied Jesus. Jesus was crucified. And imagine Peter having to wait 40 days for Jesus to come and say, man, oh my, don't worry about it. It's taken care of. Feed my sheep. Imagine that. Imagine that, you know. I know for us, sometimes we, we were talking about prayer earlier and Sometimes we pray and God will take care of it right then and there. Sometimes we got to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Right. Sometimes it could take a week. It could take 40 days. It could take a couple years. It could take a century. You know, not a century. We don't live in, you know, we'll be at the end of our, but it could take a decade, two decades to see, you know, to see God's, God's plan, you know, fulfilled. But what did Jesus tell him? Follow me. But you follow me. This evening, I just want to encourage you, no matter where you're at, whatever situation you're in, just listen to Jesus' words. But you follow me, no matter what. No matter what God has called you to endure, no matter what, how God has called you to glorify Him, follow Him. Follow Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. We serve a good God. We serve, we serve a faithful God. Amen. You know, and, and, you know, um, I just pray that this word challenges us as, as, on an individual level that we're able to just take it to heart and really, you know, consider these things and, and, and just really just follow the Lord and, and, and allow Him to fulfill His will in our lives so that Amen. we can glorify God and, and, and God will bless our lives and God will help us and give us that strength, you know. So this evening, um, I just want to thank you guys for joining us.
on Facebook Live, you know, ch uh, chiming in on YouTube. I know those people are going to see it on YouTube, and, and I pray that you guys are blessed. I'm going to just uh, pray, close this out in prayer, and um, let's, let's just go before the Lord. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, yes. for your word. Father God, Lord, just for your, your goodness and, and your mercy yes, and your Father. grace, Father God. Father, I just pray this evening, Lord, that all those who hear this message, Lord, would just be um, ministered to however you desire, however the Holy Spirit desires, yes. Lord. Not because they're, 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 the words are spoken by me, but because, because of the power of, of your Bible, the power of your word, Lord God, the scripture, Father God. I pray that you would just have your way. Give us the strength, Lord God, to just keep our feet aligned, Lord God, with you. To follow you no matter what, Lord God. Even when it gets hard, Lord God, to, to follow you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah.